Legend has it the world's first artificial wave pool was built in 1870 by the Mad King Ludwig II of Bavaria. An underground pool beneath his fairy tale castle with a wave maker powered by electricity applied directly to the water. It goes without saying, don't try that at home. Things have moved on a bit since then, and from local leisure centers to Disneyland, artificial wave pools started to rise in popularity through the 1980s and 90s to become commonplace in the 21st century. But with the addition of surfing to the Summer Olympics, focus has turned from weekend recreation to their potential for serious sport. Over the past 10 years, the interest in large-scale surf parks has exploded. With different technological approaches to create the biggest and best waves possible for elite surfing. And it's here, at Wave Garden's private R&D facility in northern Spain, that Josema Arriozola is pushing the limits even further. So that by the time that you finish the session, you're going to have on your uh, email or Instagram or whatever, all, all your clips. It's very dynamic and very exciting. It's important to understand that we can, we're never going to do a wave uh, as big as the ones you find in the ocean and as long as you have in the ocean. But our waves are good enough. Most of the days our waves are better than what you can find in the ocean. After its launch in 2005, it was six years before Wave Garden created their first truly surfable wave and another four years after that until the first park opened. Now with six parks around the world, and further seven about to open, their electromechanical cove system can customize everything about the wave, from its height and length to frequency and wave type. We are uh, working, improving, uh, amplifying the, the number of waves that we have in our facilities, that, which right now is around 20 to 30 waves uh, per facility, but now we have a new range of waves. So, for example, we've been testing new waves in Brazil. There is the country where you find the best uh, air surfers, the surfers that do, do tricks in the air. We've been testing with them uh, new waves. Now we are uh, with the same concept that we have created this wave, we are extending this concept to other different kinds of waves, not only air waves, but now we are working in barrel waves, in uh, turn waves, and we're gonna start testing all these kind of waves in the different facilities. Just feel the wave, and as soon as you catch uh, one or two, then we, we pass to the new version. Okay, so this is the one I'm used to. It. Yes, no? exactly. At this scaled down test park, Professional surfers like Aritz Aranburu trial the new wave types for Yosema, getting the chance to train on days when the surf at the coast isn't up to scratch, but also providing opportunities for inland surfers or people from locations with minimal swell. To become a pro surfer, it's really important to, to learn how the ocean works, um, to adapt yourself to, to like everything nature offers us and in a day-by-day -day basis. But then, a few years, all the time that I was being in like a good uh, place to, to practice and improve my skills for those events. I really think that the waves are good enough to, to hold events. Um, so it's going to be interesting to do events in places with no ocean. Or, and I think it's, it's going to be an important part for the evolution of our sport. While these parks can never replace the ocean, there's scope for a different kind of contest and Wave Garden's facility in Switzerland has already hosted its first professional competition. It was uh, a, a big success. It's kind of a, more close to a, a running competition where uh, all the surfers are getting points and they know that before the end of the heat they have to be the best. So every wave is a chance to improve their uh, scores. Yeah, I guess the biggest challenge is going to be to, to have um, bigger waves, bigger barrels uh, for bigger turns, you know. So it's only the beginning and we're already fascinated with, with everything that's happening. So I think for the next few years it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see the evolution.